Good morning, Mount Moriah. If you're glad to be in church this morning, say amen. amen. If you're really glad to be in church, give the Lord a little applause today. Yeah. It is good to be in church. I was walking in the door, and somebody said, Pastor, how you doing? I said, it's Sunday morning, it's beautiful outside, and God's on the throne. <laughs> amen. It's going to be a good day. Glad you're here this morning. We're going to have some fun. We're going to praise. Uh, before we get into it, I have just a couple of announcements. Uh, the kids, eight years and up, are doing an Easter skit, okay, a little play. If you're eight year old and older, well, what's, what's the cutoff limit, Donna? Eight to what? Eight, eight till high school. Eight till James's age. Come on up. Uh, you're having a meeting, having a meeting right after this service, okay? So just gather right up here in the front. And uh, we will we'll meet about that, get you signed up, make you be part of that. Also, next Sunday evening, okay, next Sunday evening, put this on your, on your calendar at 6 p.m., okay, we're going to be having a meeting here, a church business meeting. This is for all members. Uh, next Sunday evening, 6 o'clock, uh, we're going to be discussing uh, the renovation and uh, things we're going to be doing to the rec building, okay? Going to make it a little nicer, hopefully. So come be a part of that. We want you to, to show up. We want your input on that, okay? Also, I know we have a lot of people from the Christian Motorcycle Association. They watch us every Sunday morning. They're probably on Facebook right now. Today is their National Day of Prayer. Be praying for all the Christian motorcycle uh, folks out there, okay? Uh, let's see. Was there something else? Uh, Jeannie wanted me to mention uh, there's a... Can you put that up there for me, Brian? I know there's something coming up. Oh, w women's. Yeah, a women's conference. It's not until like October, but you need to... Yeah, there's Jeannie. You, you need to sign up now in order... Right. Okay, we'll have a sign-up sheet next week. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, if you have any questions... See Jenny after the service, okay? All right, let's get into the prayer list for just a minute. Uh, I'm going to go through it quickly. Uh, don't, don't, don't be offended. Uh, if your name's on here, we're just going to move quickly. Uh, Jackie Griffin, Jackie, we're praying for you. David Counts, I bet they're watching on Facebook this morning praying for you. Miss Donna, she's having another chemo treatment tomorrow morning. Please be praying for her. Pray she doesn't get sick, all right? Uh, Paul Vaughn, we're lifting him and uh, Janet up. Janet also lost her sister-in-law this week to COVID. Please be praying for them. Kathy Morgan, praying for her. Uh, John Lauder Jr., Liz Garrett, Joel McCraw, praying for Joel Pat Rhodes, Vicki Patterson, uh, Gertha Shipman, Brenda's mom, praying for her, Patricia Price, Jean Bradley, uh, Woody Price down in Lake Lure. Uh, Miss Kay Smith. Kay, I bet she's watching this morning. We're praying for her. Marsha Lida. Uh, let's see here. Who else is on my list? Uh, we've had some people watching us on Facebook throughout this whole COVID thing, and they've become, we've become like their second church. Bill and Carol Hill. Bill passed away this week. So, Miss Carol, if you're watching this morning, know that everybody here at Mount Moriah loves you, and we are praying for you. Be lifting up the Hill family. Amen. Okay. How about an unspoken request? Got those? I do too. Stand if you're able. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the ability to come to church today, Lord Father. Lord, help us to remember that church isn't something we, we have to do. Church is something we get to do. And Father, thank you for letting us be here today. Thank you for putting enough health in our bodies, enough desire in our hearts to be here this morning. And Lord, Father, we pray that you just bless us. Bless this time we have together. I pray that you bless our music. Bless our worship, Lord, Father. Let us worship you in spirit and in truth. And Lord, Father, I pray that you bless the, the preaching of your word today, Lord, Father. I pray that you'd fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me the words you want me to preach and to teach. Nothing more, nothing less. Father, help me. Lord, I can't do this without you, and I don't want to do it without you. Anoint me, Father. Help me. 
Lord, we pray for everyone who just raised a hand with an unspoken request. Something on their hearts, Lord Father. I just pray that during this hour that you'd speak to them, that you would move in their situation, Lord Father. That you'd bring healing, Lord Father, and, and open doors of opportunity. Just help us, Father. Lord, we, we pray for those who have lost loved ones in recent days and weeks. We lift up Miss Carol Hill to you today, Lord Father. Please give her a peace and comfort that is beyond her comprehension. Lord Father, we pray for our world. Lord, we, none of this is taking you by surprise. But we pray for Europe. We pray for what's going on. We, we, we pray for how it's going to affect everyone around the globe, Lord Father. We just pray that you'd have your will and your way in this situation, Lord Father. Lord, most of all, more than anything else, we pray for those who do not know you in a real and personal way through your son, Jesus Christ. I pray if there's someone here this morning in this auditorium who, who needs to give their heart to you, someone watching on the internet who's, who's never professed, I'm a sinner and I need Jesus. Father, let today be that day. We love you, Father. We love you. Thank you for being with us. Now bless us, Lord Father, as we praise and worship you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Amen.
what man seeks. Man looks upon the outward appearance, but the Lord looks inside. Okay? Psalms 139.14 For you were formed, for you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. Doesn't matter how big, how little, how tall, how short, how skinny, how chunky. Doesn't matter. <laughs> he did it. You are wonderfully and fearfully made. Amen. Ephesians 2.10 says, For God, for we are God's masterpiece. Not his junk, not his sex. His masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we do the good things He has planned for us long ago. So it doesn't make any difference what you look like. When you look in the mirror, you see God's beauty, you see what God gave you, and you go, wow, pretty cool. Hard to do. Really, especially if you're a female, it's hard to do, but it's pretty cool when you think about it. So look at it. Yes, sir.
to my dry bones Red tail that they can ride on But wet feet make me a little stone A testament to your throne on I'm nothing without you, I'm on my own The only one who satisfies my soul If that did something for you, say amen. 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 If you brought your Bible with you, let's go back this week to Proverbs 17, 22. Proverbs 17, 22. I asked you earlier, are you glad to be in church this morning? Let me ask that again. You didn't convince me. You glad to be in church this morning? Amen. That sounds better. Well, I'm glad you're in church. I'm glad you're in church because ever since we started this series a few weeks ago about laughter and I asked you to send in your jokes, I've learned something about my church family. (laughs) Y'all a bunch of heathens. Y'all sending stuff in is just plum embarrassing. There was a little old lady sent one last night to me via text me, a little old lady from the first service. Folks, it was so, I'm not going to tell it <laughs> till next week. It, but they, these are jokes that, 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 that you sent in. There was this uh, young farmer. He wanted to go into pig farm. So he bought him a, a female pig. It's called a sow. Radio. He bought him a sow named Sal. Okay, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't write the jokes. It's just how they are. And because he was a new farmer, and he just had the one female pig, and it's hard to pig farm with just one pig. He needed more pigs, so he had to find some male pigs. And he heard about a farmer down the road named Farmer Brown, who'd been raising pigs for decades. So he gets Sal up out of the mud, out of the pen, puts her in the truck, takes her down to Farmer Brown, explains the situation, says, can you help me? I said, sure, we, we got this. You leave her here for the rest of the day, come back, pick her up this afternoon, we'll see what happens. So he comes back that afternoon, picks up Sal, throws her truck, talking to Farmer Brown, says, how do I know if this worked or not? He says, it's easy. He said, when you get up in the morning, said, if Sal is laying in the shade, you know it took. It's made in the shade. She's going to have piglets. If she's laying in the sun, then it didn't work. Had to bring her back. Went home, put Sal in the pen, slept through the night, kind of anxiously got up, saw, ah, she was laying in the shade. I mean, in the sun. It didn't take. Loaded her back up in the truck, took her down to Farmer Brown, says it didn't work. She was laying in the shade, in the sun. Says, let's do it again. Left her there all day. Picked her up that afternoon, took her back home. Next morning, got up, looked out the window. There she is laying in the sun. It didn't work. Picks her up again, takes her down there, leaves her. Repeats this. Gets up the next morning, she's laying in the sun. It didn't work. Picks her up again, takes her to Farmer Brown. He's getting tired of this, picking this pig up, taking her down there. Brings her back the next day, puts her in a pen, goes to bed. Gets up the next morning, he says, I can't stand it. Says, I'm not even going to look out there. Gets his wife, said, honey, would you look outside, see where Sal's laying? Well, she goes to the kitchen window, looks out. 
He says, is she in the shade? No. Is she in the sun? No, she's not there either. Where is she? His wife says, she's in the truck tooting the horn. <laughs> I am not responsible for the content of these jokes. Here's another one somebody sent in. What's the difference between people who pray in church and those who pray in casinos? The ones who pray in casinos are really serious. <laughs> okay, one more. There's no couple. They've been faithful churchgoers for decades. Old, old folks. But it was snowing one Sunday morning. Not enough to cancel church, but they decided they just want to get out on the roads and sidewalks, so they just going to stay home that day. And they decided, well, we still want to have some preaching, so they turned on the TV, something they hadn't done in decades. Turned on the TV, listened to the preacher. They heard this guy on there talking, and he was one of those Pentecostal, you know, healing preachers. He'd walk up to you and, and heal you, and people were coming up, and, and you know, blind people were walking, ah, they could see, and People couldn't hear. They, they, were, they could hear again and stuff like that. They were just amazed at what was going on. They go to the Baptist church. We don't do that at the Baptist church. You know, they just freaked out just watching this. But at the end of the program, the preacher says, look, for all of you at home, he said, all you've got to do is touch the body part that hurts you or is sick. And said, we'll heal you through the television right here, right now. They looked at each other. And, you know, the woman had heart problems for years. So she, you know, shrugged, said, let's give it a shot. So she put her hand over her heart like that. She looked over at Jim, her husband. He put his hand down a little bit lower, a little bit lower, to a place that men think a whole lot of. And she looked at Jim, and she says, really? This preacher says he can heal the sick, not raise the dead. <laughs> I'll wait till you get that one. <laughs> Let's read our scripture. Proverbs 17, 22. A merry heart doeth good. Like what? A medicine. But a broken spirit drieth the bones. For the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about and focusing on the first part of that verse. Okay? A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. We've been talking about the benefits of laughter, why we need to laugh, how it helps us. Okay, Somebody tell me this morning, based on the last two weeks, tell me how laughter benefits us. Somebody. Health? Be more specific. What does it do? Thank you, sister. <laughs> I was really worried about y'all because in the first service, I asked that. The first thing somebody says, helps you get pregnant. And it does. Okay. Somebody tell me something else. Blood pressure. Come on, church. Reduces stress. Makes you look better. Feel better. What, what is it? It, make, it does make you prettier. Smiling automatically makes you pretty. Studies show that. Everybody smile. It's helping most of you. <laughs> Remember, it helps you lose weight. Remember that? Lowers your blood pressure. All kinds of things like that. It's just, it's just good for you, okay? Well, this morning, I want to focus on the second part, the not-so-pleasant part of that verse. Let's read it again. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. We, we've seen that. We've proved that. But, everybody say but. But a broken spirit drieth the bones. Folks, dry bones are dead bones. You ever met any dead Christians? You ever been to a dead church? You, you, you know, you, you, you walk into those places and it feels a lot like a funeral home, only not as happy. Okay? And, and you've, you've got the guy at the front greeting everybody. And, he, you know, he, he, he looks like he just lost his best friend. I'm talking about dead churches here. You know, and, and he greets you like this. Hey, we're glad you're here today. We're experiencing the joy of the Lord. And we want you to be just like us. 
You ever, you ever been there, church? I have visited those places. I have been there. That's dry bones. Church, how many of us really believe that every day is a gift from God and we should rejoice in it? Anybody here? Amen? How many of us really believe that Christians should be the most joyful people on the planet? Come on, church. How many of you believe we should be the happiest people on earth? Amen? Amen? Then why aren't we? Just asking. Why, 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 don't, why don't, if we believe that, why don't our hearts tell our faces? Why, why, why not? Again, have you ever walked into church and thought, man, what's going on here? There's something wrong with these people. Why is it that even though we have the Holy Spirit of God living in us, so many of us are down, defeated, and depressed, living in fear instead of faith? Living in doubt. Oh, I don't know what's going to happen. Ah, you watch the news. See what's going on in this world. Oh, it's, it's all bad. It's all terrible. In John 10.10, 10, Jesus gives us a warning. He said, the thief. Who's the thief, church? Satan. He says, the devil comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. And he's good at it. Anybody experienced it? Any of his work in your life? I, I have. Amen? But I have good news for you. Listen, if you're a Christian, if you're a Christian this morning, say amen. amen. Satan cannot touch your soul. Isn't that great news this morning? Amen. Satan cannot touch your soul if you belong to Jesus Christ. But listen to this. He can still kill and destroy your joy. He can even though we have the power of Christ living in our hearts, Satan can still take away our smile, he can steal our laughter, and he can break our spirit and leave us with a bad case of dry bones. Wouldn't it be awesome if you and I could wake up every day, every day, with this attitude? Lord, today is the day you have made. And you made it special just for me to enjoy, to spread the gospel, to tell somebody about you. No matter what comes at me today on this beautiful earth, I'm going to be thankful and I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to keep a smile on my face. Wouldn't it be great if we could live like that? Is that possible? We can. We can, but... We have to be aware of the things that can break our spirit and dry our bones. We have to be looking out. Because see, Satan's like a lion. You remember the verses? He roams around. He's, he's looking to see who he can attack. And, and, and some of you all have bullseyes on your back. Be, be, because you refuse to smile now. Because you're taking yourself way too seriously. We can live that kind of life. That, that, that abundant life. That, that full life. A rejoicing life. If we're aware of the things that can break our spirit. And that can dry our bones. I want to give you three of them this morning. This is not an exhaustive list. I'm going to give you some this morning. I'll probably give you some next week. But this is the order in which God gave them to me. Okay? Let's go real quickly. Three of them. Number one, let's start with the most obvious thing that'll, that'll mess you up and take away your laughter and your joy. And that is people. People will mess you up. People. Amen? I told someone one day, I said, man, have a great day. He said, Pastor, it's not the day I'm worried about. It's the people that are going to be in it. <laughs> That's true. Amen? The days are fine. It's the people we got to deal with. Amen? Folks, almost every day, if you leave your house, you will encounter someone who gets on your very last nerve, and sometimes you don't have to leave the house. Am I telling the truth? Is this thing on this morning? <laughs> you will meet someone 
who will try to rain on your parade. And let's just be real. We're in church this morning, okay? I'm going to preach to you just a minute, all right? You're going to cross paths with an idiot. No amens there, huh? <laughs> if you never cross paths with an idiot, it might be you. That wasn't in my notes. <laughs> and folks, it's hard to laugh when you're dealing with those people. Amen? And you know those people. You work with those people. You live with those people. You shop with those people. You drive around with those people. You go to church with those people. Folks, listen, we can't let those people steal our joy. There's somebody in here, right, right here. You're in church. There's somebody in here you don't like. There's somebody, when you look at them, you go, mm, you know, you, you, you get tense. And, I don't like that person, never liked them, never will like them. Well, bless your heart. You ain't hurting nobody but yourself. Because you letting them live in your head rent free. Sometimes you got to let them people go. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but preacher, why do people have to be so frustrating, aggravating, and uncommodating? Why are people so stupid, preacher? Do you know any stupid people? Again, I'd say yes right now. <laughs> I'd be fine if it wasn't for all these stupid people. Why are they that way, preacher? People are that way because we're all sinners. We're imperfect. We're messed up. There ain't one person in here that ain't messed up. I don't care how much money you got, what kind of car you drive. What kind of house you live in, how educated you are, every one of us are messed up. Because we're sinners. Adam and Eve put it in us and we all got a big old case of it. A big old case of the stupid. We, we got it. So that's why we're the way we are. But think about it this way, folks. If people, if everyone was kind and nice and accommodating, you and I would never learn how to be patient. Would we? Amen? I know what you're thinking. <laughs> I could do without some patience. Let's make everybody nice. No, that's not the way it works. And listen to this. And let me take this a little further. If you belong to Christ, raise your hand this morning. It means you're born again. Okay? For those of you that just raised your hand, guess what? No one is in your life by accident. No one. What about the person that cut me off this morning? Come to church. God put them there. He allowed them to be there. Because he's testing you. He's trying to grow you. Every person, lovable or difficult, has been placed by God in your life to help you grow in your walk with Christ. Every person. <coughs> God uses people in our lives like sandpaper. And, and, and some, uh, some people are higher grit than others. Amen? <laughs> Y'all know what I'm saying. <coughs> and, and he uses that person to shape us and to mold us into what he wants us to be. You're not dealing with anybody by accident if you're a Christian. Because God is trying to make you more like his son, Jesus. Us Baptists, we call that sanctification. He's trying to make you more like Christ each and every day. And again, I know somebody's saying, well, Brian, I get it. I get it. We're going to have these stupid people, these idiots all the time. So how do I deal with these people that attempt to steal my joy and take away my smile? Well, let me give you two ways. Number one, the Bible tells us to forbear them. Say forbear. That's a King James word. Anybody know what it means? Overlook. It means to overlook. Christian, there's people in your life you just got to overlook. Don't worry about them. They're not worth you tearing yourself up about. Forbear them. Let it go. Let them go. Don't take it personal. <coughs> I shared this with you a couple of years ago. Excuse me. 
I was watching a uh, nature show. I didn't know this. But eagles and buzzards are natural enemies. Did you know that? So you learned something today in church. I didn't know that either. I thought birds were birds were birds. It didn't matter what they were. Amen? Well, it turns out that they are natural enemies. Here's the thing. Eagles are normally loner-type animals. You never see a whole flock of eagles, do you? Think about it. But buzzards travel together. Okay? So what they'll do is when buzzards see an eagle, they see the eagle, oh, our enemy, they attack the eagle, they gang up on him in bunches. That's not fair, is it? What's the eagle supposed to do? Well, God equipped the eagle with something buzzards don't have. And that's the ability to fly higher. Buzzards can't go as high as eagles. So the eagle just goes, see y'all, and goes up higher. Folks, for that person in your life that's pushing your buttons and aggravating you and making you crazy, all you've got to do is fly a little higher than them. Don't get down in the mud with them. Don't stay down at their level. Just fly higher. Look over them. Forbear them. I hope that helps somebody right there. Look over them. Now, number two, th this, this will help you deal with stupid people. Remember that we're all stupid sometimes. Amen? That stupid person that cut you off this morning come to church, you did the same thing to somebody sometimes. That person when you were in Walmart this week and, 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 and the kids were going crazy around the buggy and they kept pushing it into your calf muscle and it hurt and you wanted to slap, you know, slap somebody, slap a stupid right out of them, you've done the same thing. Everything they've done, you've done. Amen? Sometimes we have to humble ourselves. And I know it's hard to imagine that we're imperfect and we're stupid sometimes too, but we are. Guess what? You and I have been difficult to deal with a time or two ourselves. Amen? Remember that the next time. All right, number two. Worry. Worry. The first is people. They'll steal your joy. The second thing is worry. Church, almost nothing breaks your spirit and kills your laughter quicker than worry. Do we have any worriers here this morning? Anybody will admit to it? One, two, three, four, five, six. Y'all doing pretty good. Well, you five or six that just raised your hand, y'all can listen. Everybody else just go to sleep. Y'all don't have a problem here. Okay? Have you ever laid awake at night? Thinking about it's, it's, it, we wasn't we weren't we weren't worried. We just thinking about it. Oh, I wasn't worried. I was just concerned. You can call it what you want, but worry is worry is worry. Amen. And it will steal your joy. Some of you are worrying about something right now. And if I ask you to be honest and raise your hand and ask if you have a worry about something or someone in your life right now, nine out of ten of us would raise our hands. Amen? Some of you, I know two sitting in this service right now. Two people that I know right now, you worry if you don't have something to worry about. I'm not making eye contact with them. So if I'm not looking at you, I, I, I know them. Because they've come to me. And said, Preacher, you know things are going really good. Oh, that ain't good. Because <laughs> I just know the wheels are going to fall off any minute now. Amen? Brenda, am I telling the truth? Amen? Listen. Laughter and worry are like oil and water. They don't mix. You can't do both at the same time. You have to make a choice. Am I going to trust God and have joy? Or am I going to give in to worry? It's your choice. Preacher, you mean I can choose not to worry? Yes, you can. You can choose not to worry. Oh, well, that's impossible. No, it's not. Because the Bible tells us not to worry. And the Bible's not going to tell us to do something that's 
Not possible. Amen? Now, church, I could preach on worry for the next six months. Every, every Sunday, I could preach on worry. I could preach that worry is a sin. Did you know if you're worried this morning, you're sinning against God? You are. You are. Because worry is the opposite of faith. And the Bible says that without faith, we cannot please God. Amen? And if we're not pleasing God, that's sinful. Think about that. Okay? I could preach that just as laughter will heal you, worry will kill you. Amen? Anybody in the medical profession here? Anybody? Amen? Amen? Got a doctor with us this morning? I better tell you, worry will kill you. It'll put you in the hospital. Keep worrying. I could preach that. I could preach that most of what you worry about never happens. Amen? That's been scientifically proven. Most of what you worry about never comes to fruition. I think it's like 90% of what we worry about never happens. And of that 10% that could have, there's nothing we can do about it anyway. I won't preach on that this morning. But let me say this. If you are a worrier today, you're finding it difficult to laugh, and rejoice, and be glad. God has a way out for you. God has freedom for you this morning. Anybody interested in that? Anybody want to know how to quit worrying? This is a sermon you've been waiting on all your life. Yeah, preacher, how do I? So, no, somebody's sitting here going, I don't know, preacher, I kind of like worrying. <laughs> I think I'll just keep doing that. It's worked for me so far, so I'll just keep doing that. All my hair fell out, but I'm all right with that. <laughs> Got high blood pressure? I'm okay, let's keep going. <laughs> the next time worry sets in, go to Philippians chapter 4. You don't have to turn there. No, we'll put it up on the screen for us. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Paul here gives us three steps. To overcome worry. Alright? Now, a few of you need this. Okay? Because I know you. You worry. You worry constantly. Okay? Here, here it is. Step one. We need to pause. Let me read. Be careful for nothing. What does that mean in the King James? Be careful for nothing. It means don't worry. Stop worrying. He says stop. Pause. Pause a minute. Well, how can, how can I pause, preacher, when I feel worry coming on? You can pause. You can stop it because you can know that God is good. Do you know God is good? Do you believe it, church? Do you believe God loves you? Amen. Do you believe he's in control? Then why don't we stop and remind ourselves of that? See, I don't know if you're like me, but I have spiritual amnesia. I forget how good God is sometimes. What he's done for me in the past. How he's delivered me. Given me victory. Lifted me up. Kept me going. Picked me up out of the mud. Dusted me off. And, Come on Brian. Let's keep going. He's done it time after time after time after time. I have to stop and pause. Oh, you got me through that thing. I bet you'll get me through this thing. So pause. Friend, listen to this. If you belong to God... If you profess in your heart, Jesus is my Lord and Savior, then nothing will happen to you without His permission. Amen? Some of you don't believe that. But it's, it's here. Nothing's going to happen to you without His permission. You can have the assurance that He's working all things together for your good. Step one, pause. Let me keep reading here. But in everything by prayer and supplication. That's step two. Pray. Pause. Stop. When you feel the, when you feel the worry coming on, stop. Okay, Satan, don't even bring that stuff here. I, I, God's my father. He's going to take care of me. And you start to pray. You just pray. The apostle Peter tells us to pray too. He said, cast your cares upon the Lord. Why? Because he cares for you. Listen. 
Just like you can't laugh and worry at the same time, you can't pray and worry at the same time. I challenge you. Pray. Step three. With thanksgiving, thanksgiving. What is thanksgiving? Thanksgiving is when you go, thank you, Jesus. Praise. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Step three is praise. Pause, pray, and praise when worry comes on you. Praise God for how he's answered prayers in the past. How he's delivered you from other problems. And when we pause and pray and praise, look what happens in verse 7. And the peace of God. Folks, we, we can't comprehend the peace of God. It's too good. It's beyond what we can understand. But, hey, does anybody need some this morning? The peace of God needs some of that. Every day. Pause, pray, praise. And the peace of God which passes our understanding shall keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. He'll give you some peace in your head. Keep you, keep, keep, keep you from waking up all night. Worrying about this thing. He'll put peace in your heart. You'll know God's got me. God loves me. You may need that today. That's how you stop worrying, folks. Go to Philippians. It'll help you every time. Let me finish up here. The third thing that steals our joy, dries our bones, breaks our spirit, our circumstances. So just life. Life, the things that happen from day to day can break our spirit and steal our laughter. Wouldn't it be great if problems in life came to us one at a time? Wouldn't that be great? Anybody ever been to a batting cage before? You know, you get in the cage, you put the helmet on, they give you a baseball bat, and this machine throws the ball, and you, and you, you anybody ever done that? Wouldn't it be great if life just threw... One problem at a time. But no, see, in life, either the machine's malfunctioning or there's a whole bunch of machines because you get like five or six at a time coming at you. You know, you, you wake up one day and, 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 you know, before work and you're busy, you're trying to get things together and you burn the toast. And you think, wow, man. So you go in there and you go start a load of clothes and watch the machines tore up. You go outside, the car won't crank. The boss is fussing and cussing and carrying on. You look through Junior's book bag. The teacher's a little concerned about his behavior. You ever been there? Yeah. Oh, and on your way out the door, the phone rings. You let the machine get it. It's the doctor's office. They're concerned about something in your blood work. That's the way life works. If we could just have them one at a time, one day at a time, we could sit in the back and cage Greg and we could knock them out of the park. But they all hit at once. Life has a way of piling up on the same day. And it's hard to laugh, isn't it, sometimes? Amen? It's hard to laugh. We have to remember... I preach this so much because it's so true. God loves you. He's on your side. He's for you. He is not against you, Christian. And he really is, Romans 8, 28, he really is working all things together for your good. When's the last time you were aggravated and frustrated? When was it? Yesterday? Yesterday? I got you beat. I was mad this morning, a little after 5 o'clock. <laughs> Let me take you back to my day. Tammy and I had to go out of town yesterday for just a little while. And we had a big lunch while we were out. It was a good day. We found a barbecue place. And I'm one of those people that when I eat barbecue, when I'm done, I have to repent. <laughs> so, man, I eat. And so we got back home, and, and uh, we were, you know, it was supper time and uh, dinner for you folks from up north and refined. Uh, and uh, 
She said, well, what you want to eat, darling? I said, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good. Big lunch. I said, I believe all I would like to have is just a, a, a little bowl of oatmeal. I love oatmeal. I said, man, that'd be good. And so I went to the kitchen, and I, I'm, I'm a good husband. Didn't even bother my wife. I fixed my oatmeal, ate my oatmeal. And she said, how was that? I said, that was really good, really good. I said, only one thing was missing. She said, what? I said, some meat to go with it. <laughs> and then it hit me. I said, man, it's later, late, late night by then. I said, you know, what would be good? I w I'd like to get up early enough in the morning to go to Hardy's. Because I haven't had one in a while. I'd like to have a steak biscuit from Hardy's. Anybody like those things? <laughs> I'd like to have a steak biscuit from Hardy's. Thought nothing about it. Went to bed. A little after 5 o'clock. We have a dog. Her name is Sophie. That, that's Sophie. She's a, she's a mini husky. She, she weighs about 35 pounds. And she, she must have been like me yesterday. She must have ate so much she needed to repent, but didn't. Because a little after 5 o'clock, this morning, I heard her downstairs. Oh, man. Oh, she's sick. Swing my feet out of bed. In church, I'm going to confess to you. The first word out of my mouth was crap. I'm not proud of it, but that's what I said. I get up, I go down, and sure enough, Sophie's gotten sick. So I start cleaning stuff up. I'm, you know, this last thing you want to do at five something in the morning is clean up dog vomit. And I looked at her there, and she was so, I mean, she, it was almost like she knew what she'd done. She gave me the sad eyes and everything. And, so I hooked the leash up to her, and I took her outside, you know, just in case she was sick or more or something. And I got, if you've ever been to my house, my family knows how this, this works. You go out the back door, or if, if you're a church family, y'all come to the back, nobody comes. If you come to the front door, it means you're a salesman or something like that. <laughs> Maybe that's the way it is at your house. Go out the back door, and I'm going out around to the front yard, and I get to the corner, and it hits me. Now, I've never heard the audible voice of God, I don't think, Greg, but one time. And that was during a skateboard accident. But I get around the corner, and I think I heard God say, How about a biscuit? <laughs> Grayson, I was in the front yard bent over, laughing, holding a leash with a sick dog going, <laughs> God, you're so awesome. I'm getting a biscuit this morning. <laughs> you go, bro, what does this have to do with anything? That's a circumstance. That stole my joy. But even in that silly little circumstance, God was working it out so that I could have my biscuit. And it was good, Chip. <laughs> it was good. I had a good biscuit. Folks, my circumstance was not too serious this time. But regardless of your circumstance, God is bigger than your circumstance. He's bigger than what you're facing. Anybody serve a great big God? God is still in the miracle business. Can anybody use a miracle today? Come on. God is still in the healing business. He has not changed. What he did 2,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 years ago, he can still do today. He can still do it. Donna, come on up, please. I want to ask you to stand to your feet. Beloved, knowing that God... Is still in all of those businesses. The healing business. The miracle business. 
the making life better business. Shouldn't that make us laugh? Shouldn't that make us grin? Even when we have to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and clean up dog vomit. Amen? Even when we get up in the morning and somebody's got a flat tire, now if it's you, don't blame me in the morning. Shouldn't we still laugh? Don't we still have joy? God's still on the throne. He hadn't went anywhere. I read something this week. said this. said, laughter is the shock absorbers of life. It helps even out the rough road that we travel through this world. Amen? Does anybody need some new shock absorbers today? The old ones wore out. You know what you need to do? You need to come down here to this altar. And you say, Lord, I've lost my laughter. I'm hurting. Life is tough. I'm asking you right now, come on down. Maybe I'm talking to you. Maybe you're facing something today that's bigger than you. You can't handle it. Your God can. Come on down. Maybe you're here this morning. You've never given your heart to Jesus Christ. Oh, man. Today's the day to make it right. Come on down. I'm going to ask you right now, if you would just close your eyes, bow your heads, just for a few minutes. If God's speaking to your heart right now, would you come down? Come down to the altar. Let God have that thing that you're worried about. Somebody here, you're worried about somebody in your life. You can't, you can't fix it. But your God can. Will you come down? Are you hurting today? Anybody need prayer this morning? Raise your hand. Need prayer? Yeah. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus for every hand I just saw go up. You know what's on their heart. You know their burden, Lord Father. I ask you right now in the name of Jesus that you bring healing to that situation. That you bring health to that circumstance, Lord Father. That you would open doors of opportunity. That you would show these people they have hope in Jesus Christ. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, I pray. In Jesus' name. If you would, just keep your head bowed, your eyes closed. Let people have their time at the altar. And it's not too late. If you need to come down, come on down. The main thing is, I don't want you to leave here like you came in. 